Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God sent the Son to the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God is our refuge and strength, a present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth be moved, though the mountains be tumbled into the depths of the sea. God's mercy endures forever. Though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble in its tumult. God's mercy endures forever. Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations, and as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives in range with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the evening. reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the tree that is in the, we may eat of, all, of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You shall both you, you sh nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree that was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they were, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made long loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
A reading from the fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. As sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgressions of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died through one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift of the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one's trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's disobedience the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stone. 
Jesus said to him again, It is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only God. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends. Amen, we praise your name, O God. Amen, we praise your name, O God. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, we praise your name, O God. Amen, see ya could do me, sir. Amen, see ya could do me, sir. Amen, bow, amen, bow. Amen, see ya could do me, sir. It's always good to sing when you're stepping into the wilderness. It's always good to sing when you're starting to get your backpack ready to go on a holy hike. In the wilderness, friends, the location where God's people encounter, I think, their greatest fears. And so hopefully on a Sunday and uh, beginning at baptism when we uh, eat and share in this most divine supper, we are hopefully filled up with the Holy Spirit and sent out hand in hand into the world. And I know frequently thrown and driven about, and we've really experienced this, winds and storms and hail and snow and rain and traffic, just like Noah and the animals in the ark during the 40 days and nights of severe storms. How wonderful though, no matter how bruised and battered we feel. What a gift that on this Sunday, as we gather, as we pray together, we are reminded that we are sustained. Matthew reminds us in Matthew's Gospel, we are sustained just as Jesus by the Spirit. As he, he wrangles with Satan, the deceiver, the liar. So we, I, am confronted with some interesting challenges when together we walk into the desert, into the wilderness. So we are led by the Spirit, we are guided by the Spirit, we are upheld by the Spirit, as we have to, I think, investigate where do I say no to the world's temptation, the world's seduction, and where do I say yes to God? And don't get me wrong, I, I, it's more than just saying Lester, saying no to that dream, McLaren 576, that I, I, I really am craving to, to, to boost down PCH. Oh, an F-250 with a four-inch lift with the Pioneer speakers. Woo! I know Christian appreciates that. I'm tinted windows, my surfboard on the rack, checking up on my blockchain of hope. Did I make my billion yet, Bitcoin? It's more than that. It is how do I say no to to the seduction in the language of Pharaoh, the the you you the three a.m. voice that says you're not working hard enough, you're not you're not you're not being productive enough. Those powerful voices. 
not even voices, those powerful whispers that are that can be that can linger, perhaps. That's asking the question, who are you? How might God, how might the Spirit be at work in this, friends, with you, with me? How might God utilize this issue in my life to bring about good or transformation, even in good times? The Holy Spirit prompts us to confront, I think, the wilderness and the, the wild beasts within me. How do I assess how much I am focusing on self, on ego, on prayer, as we prepare to say no to the world's priorities in order to say yes to God's priorities. Uh, on this journey, we are walking, we are hiking, we are uh, taking a journey hand in hand, friends, because we're walking towards uh, the Golgotha, uh, the place where we get to crucify our errors, our blunders, our hurts. My sins. And like every holy hike, and I've seen some of your pictures on Instagram, and I admire you, especially those who have gone down the hill to the wreck Laguna Beach hike. I, that's a bold heck. I, I mean, I've taken the, the, I've gone to the tennis courts and parked there and, and, and taken that hike, and my favorite is still stagecoach, 6.7 miles, three hours less the time, African time. And so this whispers that entice me, that seduce me to despair, to doubt. If people realized who I was, they would want nothing really to do with me. Am I up to the task? I have no idea what I'm doing. This fake until you make it, it's not just working. I've got to keep it together. I've got to put on a brave face, but I'm grumbling. Did God truly forgive me? Does God truly accept me for who I am? What a gift of scripture, friends. What a wonderful invitation that scripture reminds you, reminds me that through years, through centuries, there have been people like you and me that have taken this journey. Moses was a shepherd for 40 years before God called him in the burning bush and took him back to Egypt. After calling down fire from heaven, Elijah spent time hiding in the desert from his adversaries. And when he hid, Cosmic messengers catered to him, providing his necessities. King David, the one whom God loved with all God's heart, escaped to the desert to avoid King Saul hiding in caves. The uh, uh, Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness before entering the promised land. The, the Paul, the great writer, orator, and the one who I have so many disagreements with, but it's good to, to wrestle with scripture, right? St. Paul, after his conversion on the road to Damascus, he spent almost 15 years in the desert studying, learning, exploring what this Jesus did. To before they were even kings, before Israel had kings, they had judges. And one of the youngest judges was Deborah. And she stepped in uh, at a young age into a position only held by men. Difficult to dream of things you have never seen done. And she steps up and sought freedom for her people from Sisera, a cruel Canaanite king. Anna lived in the temple.
temple, you know that, that, that scene where Mary and Joseph take Jesus, right, um, to, to declare his purification rites after birth, uh, the, the circumcision. Anna is living in that temple. And we know that we hear Simeon, um, who recognizes this baby for who the baby is and declares he would bring salvation to Israel. Anna had only been married for seven years before her husband dies, leaving her widow in that cultural time. She knew sorrow, but she sought God. She fasted and she prayed and she was relentlessly faithful and even at 84 years old apparently, when she laid eyes on this Prince of Peace, she went out to tell everyone, anyone that would hear about redemption. What does the desert and the wilderness look like for, for me, for you today as we sit in this wonderful St. Mary's? Where are we today? Ah, 62 degrees, almost getting there. We, our machines working overtime uh, and prayers to our vestry and treasurer especially thank you uh, and thank you all for your your contributions your financial help helps us heat the church thank you it's up to 68 degrees what what does this wilderness look like for me for you today i've heard it said we live in a VUCA world oh, volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous. I've heard it even said, culturally, we're living in a liquid culture, something that's constantly changing so fast, so much. The church is in the desert, in this VUCA world. And I think, and I believe, and I believe to my bones that people are craving community, love. They are craving to not be alone. They want connection. They just don't want it from the church quite yet. I'll call you when I need you. And I wonder if that's part of our faithful work. Kind of like a, a good mentor. I was 17 once, believe it or not. I, leave me alone. I, I know what I'm doing. But don't leave me. Just don't go too far away. I, I like you there in the background when I need you. But I'm independent. I know what I'm doing. My own bootstraps. I watched too many westerns when I was a kid with my grandfathers. Unforgiven preacher. And so in this VUCA world, how wonderful that we gather on a Sunday, after Sunday, after Sunday, to remind one another the simplicity and the gift of saying, you are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Jesus travels to the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, the liar, the tested while surrounded by wild beasts, and then cared for angels. And then he begins his ministry. Lent is a time to spend in the wilderness. For me, it is the courage to ask that powerful question, what is my pain teaching? What courage it takes to ask that question. What courage it takes for you to sit in these pews. What courage it takes for you to say a prayer for a neighbor. What courage it takes to say, I love you and I'm not going to keep score. What courage it takes to say, I'm going to win my neighbor on their path of reconciliation to God. time to surrender, a time to affirm, well done for not being perfect, we don't all get it right. What a time to not be afraid. And please, 
Lent is, it can be seductive, but Lent for me is not to be overly depressed and overly critical of myself. There are 40 days in Lent, Sundays do not count, Sunday is a feast day. So that's why we'll always keep having scrumptious coffee hours. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, hospitality ministry. Always time to sign up, to bring a croissant or a pain de chocolat. And then we go back into our week together with a meal, hand in hand, exploring, calling in there, reminding someone that they love, reminding someone that you're not alone, you're not alone, you're not alone. And relying on God, on the Spirit, more than what my ego thinks it can do. Calling out to the name of my Lord so that I can see clearer and clearer and better what you are meant to be, what I am meant to be, which is shining your light into this frosty world and to melt those icebergs of hate, of fear, even those icebergs of certitude. Because for me, the opposite of faith is not doubt, it is certitude. What will you do this week as we step into the wilderness together? What will be your first prayer? this day when you leave this church, friends, as you step into the wilderness. May you surrender, may I surrender my pride and my selfishness to God. invite you to stand to our able as we offer and pray a summary of our faith on page 11 by sharing and praying together the nice and creed. We believe in one God. In this holy season of Lent, let us turn to God in prayer, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all the holy people of God, that we may be led by the Spirit to hunger for the word of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peoples and nations of the world, and for those in authority, that power and glory may not turn us from the way of justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are afflicted and oppressed, that God will open our ears to their cry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, that we may believe in our hearts and confess with our lips the word that is near, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, and for all who are experiencing the many faces of loss, that we may know that nothing separates from us from the love of God revealed through Christ Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially those for whom we now pray. For the departed, James Kitchen, Jr., James Smiley Ketter, Patricia Whiteside, Doug Shirtliff, Vivian Sissy Karras, for healing, comfort, and other requests, Cynthia, Josephine, Gordon and Trish, Anne and Steve, Larry and Richard, Jim and Hannah, John and Sandra, Judy and Pam, Brian and Zai, Naomi, Gregory, Heidi, Jim, Jean, James, Eric, Sean, Judy, Justin, Jacob, Stella, Isabel, Daniel, and Robin, Kathy and Mark, Evan, Jennifer, Jeff, Maureen, and Dave. For all others in need, all in fear, disruption and devastation in Ukraine, local students and teachers, and elected officials. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for John, our bishop. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Strong and faithful God, hear us as we cry to you. Stretch out your hands to save us, that we may praise you for your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Lonely greetings are like in peace.
track of everybody and so I'm trying to get people to make phone calls and everything good morning it is a gift to pray with you it is a gift to have you here if you are visiting us today please make sure to introduce yourself to me and tell me what your favorite song has been this week. I, and I, it can't be, um, I'm singing in the rain. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> I welcome the water. We need the water. Good morning. Well, we'd like to introduce you to some new music. Might be new to you, old to many of us. To come to the edge of your wilderness on Thursday at 7 to pray to be together, and to sing chants at our Taizé service. And it's on page six if you need a reminder or anything. It's the first Thursday. But come, uh, feel free to, to be anointed and prayed for, especially we pray for ourselves, we pray for our families, all of you and this world, which needs it so much. But I invite you to come and be still and know. Good morning. Our Lenten program begins today, our Lenten outreach program, with care items for Casa Teresa. So this Lent, we're going to gather in items for pregnant women over the age of 18, or either struggling with being alone, or without support, or even with being homeless. Casa Teresa was founded in 1976 in Santa Ana to provide shelter and a home for those in need. Their mission is to provide pregnant women in crisis a loving home to begin their healing journey. Their vision is to break cycles, transform women, and help families thrive through effective caring residential programs. And they espouse the core values of love, hope, compassion and empowerment, and that is surely something that we at St. Mary's can support. Casa Teresa has provided a list of items for welcome baskets. I will hand out copies of the list after the service, and the list will be in the bulletins from next week onwards, <clears throat> excuse me. As well as the baskets of various items, diapers are always in short supply, especially sizes four, five, and six, as well as pull-ups. You will see some that's in the back of the church in the narthex, and that's where we'll <clears throat> gather the goods. Um, we'll, uh, we will gather items in during the six weeks of Lent from today until Palm Sunday, April the 2nd. And maybe you would consider bringing some items each week as a Lenten discipline. Whatever you can do will be gracefully received. Please place your donations on the table in the narthex. And for those online, um, please consider joining us by putting your donations in the box provided in the parish office, Mondays through Fridays, 9 to 12 noon. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and caring for others. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barbara. Thank you, Outreach. And I remember the Outreach. Dr. Rebecca. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Woo yeah. I am so glad that I'm here. And uh, part of the congregation, I just love it here. Such beautiful people, beautiful, beautiful people. You've welcomed me, and I and your arms have been open, and I receive your love and your graciousness, and I'm so happy to be affiliated with this church. And thank you all of you who came out to support January and February events, a first for Laguna Beach, and I um, look forward to next year, and it will be even better. 
However, right now, I have a special gift I would like to give our pastor, Lester. And it is because he opened his arms. As I said to you earlier, I went from knocking from door to door, asking people in uh, businesses in this town if they would sponsor our multi-ethnic artwork or black history. And I got a no, 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 no. So by the time I got to this point, I said, okay, it might not be another no, Lord. So get my spirit ready, lift my heart up, guard my heart. And help me to get through this. This is the last one was St. Mary's. And I went to Pastor and I emailed him to give him a little heads up. And uh, eventually he said, let's do this. So he's been with me since June and has seen me through this. And I am so honored, so very, very blessed to present this gift to Pastor Lester. And it is a gift that says um, seed planting. Hey. And he is a seed, and I think all of you will know that. You know that he's a seed planter. If you haven't had a seed from him planted in your heart, see me afterwards. And I'll tell you what that means. Let's give him a hand. Okay. Gratitude, Dr. Rebecca, is a gift to take the journey with you and a gift to be with you on this journey and with all of you. It's a gift to take the journey with you. Uh, Logan is not here, he's traveling. I wanted to affirm this Wednesday we have a six week Bible study starting this Wednesday, March the 1st. It is Soldiers in Scripture, and you'll find that information on page five together with a, a um, QR code with more information. and. Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting conversation, and I'll try to see if we can stream that as well. Uh, you've heard me always say we walk hand in hand so that we can be a blockchain of blessings to the world. So please pick up uh, fresh off the press our Lenten newsletter, Parish Voice. Feel free to take one with you, and we'll have a, another email copy because there's some very cool articles from our president, choir president. Karen Zafati, an article by Logan, and some great pictures from ECW, Episcopal Church Women, which also I want to lift up because, as you notice, we have something new in our house of worship today, and that is a banner from 1984 that uh, was handmade, and I'm sure Pat August can give better details, but a quick summary is that that was made by ECW then would have been called the Women's Service League. So I think with some sherry and some hand stitching, that's what we got in the 80s. Uh, and so I just want to say thank you that we found that. Thank you, Ms. Pat, that we found that in the sacristy, rolled up in the back corner, left corner of the wardrobe where all the castles are hanging. So to find that and bring it out, because the cross that's usually there is being buffed and polished so that it can glow for Easter. Uh, nothing like resurrection crosses, but how wonderful that we could bring that out, that we could celebrate that and celebrate the ministry of the Faithful Women's Service League, AKA ECW, and the Faithful Women just uh, of this church. So thank you that we can find that. That's the update on that newsletter. Now, birthdays, anniversaries, Thanksgiving. Help! Oh! See, I like this kind of energy. Pierce with some birthdays, right? Oh, we're definitely having some singing today. Let your vocal cords ready to sing happy birthday. I like that. It means there's going to be quite a few cupcakes this week. That's it. Birthday, 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 same day. No, I know before. Same day. Twins. Christopher. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks 
I give you thanks. We celebrate the gift of birthdays. I give you thanks for these, your faithful disciples. When you call my name, they lift me, your they lift up, they lift up their birthdays, they lift up their presence, they lift up their spirit, they lift up their discipleship in this community. As you continue to hold them to the apple of the eye and hide them in the shadow of the wings of you, envelop them this birthday season with your strength, with your hope, with your promise, with your love, with your presence. For this we lift up in the name of Jesus, because I know he's not. Now we sing! Thank you, choir. Thank you, Christian, my crucifer. Wherever you find yourself in your journey of faith, it is a blessing to be with you and share in this most divine supper, this most gifted meal with you. Wherever you find yourself, you are welcome here. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor to the Lord.
we lift up this most divine supper in thanksgiving for the altar flowers of the sun they given for the glory of God to skip few on his birthday from his sister Carol Pew White and his brother-in-law Dennis White. And we also lift up this meal in thanksgiving for those who serve in the vestry and for our vestry meeting after the service, especially with the election of our senior warden and our junior warden. We continue on page 13 of your week with your friends. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again, therefore joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. <laughs> stewards and show forth your bountiful grace, but we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love, yet you never cease to care for us, but prepared the way of salvation for all people. Abraham and Sarah, who called us into covenant with you, you delivered us from slavery and sustained us in the wilderness and raised up prophets and judges to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us. He revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ in bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you who do this for the remembrance of me. And go with us in joy. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is the Christ is the Christ will Remembering his death and resurrection, and now, pre and now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons and siblings, that with all your sins, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ and with us, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever 
Amen. And now, as I say, the Christ is for us. In the language of your heart, you are born with your soul. Father, come to heaven. Thy will be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Christ the Passover is sacrificed for us.
like you to stand as you are able as we offer and share a post communion prayer together on page 15 of the Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us to the image and to the spirit of food and the sacrifice of our life. God's blessing be with you, friends. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit of pouring be with you now and always in the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and enfold you and those whom you love now and always. Amen. Amen.